folks, and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show with Ben and Lauren. Before we get into today's topic, if you haven't already, subscribe to wherever you listen to your podcast so you don't miss another episode. Also, if you're with us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe there also because we have uh, pretty great videos on products and how to's and things like that, as well as our awesome podcast. And we also have a Facebook group, the Snowy's Camping Show, which is our podcast community where we can chat about things and answer your questions and uh, just generally, yeah, a place to get involved and have a chat. Thoughts, Exactly right. Today we are talking about camping on a budget. We've all been there. I think times where we have to be very budget conscious or Mm -hmm. have to stretch things a bit thinner than maybe we'd like to. And it is a a pretty frequently requested topic as well, isn't it? It is setting up some Getting set up can be an expensive thing. Before we go any further, though, I yeah. just want to point out that we've we've got to, for those watching on YouTube the props that we've got on the table here. Right <laughs> yeah. in in the current climate of COVID, yeah. we've had to pull resources to we get have. enough change to fill up like about the bottom inch of this jar in front of us here. Yeah, with I some think change there's a contribution of about wallet, seven right? or eight people there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, that's what we've had to do to try and yeah. get a prop for this. Yeah, anyway, I know. brief Absolutely. aside, we thought it was funny that we spent 10 minutes pulling everyone's change together. Anyway, back to the topic. Back, back to the topic. Yeah. I mean, it is a bit, um, it is topical as well, especially because, as you said, over the last sort of 18 months, a lot of changes in the economy and people's jobs and reliability on income and things like that has been a bit, uh, you know, been through a bit of upheaval. Also, limitation on certain kinds of traveling and, and ways people might have usually gone about their family holidays has changed. There's a lot more people getting into camping because within your own state, you, you're pretty much able to to do whatever you like at the moment, which then brings us to camping on on a budget. So mm-hmm. uh yeah, let's get I mean, into it. I guess the first the first thing as you mentioned before is setting up. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people who haven't ever camped before in the last 18 months that now camp. Mm-hmm. So that initial setting up can be quite expensive. It can be, yeah. I think especially if you're possibly maybe not 100 percent sure exactly what it is that you need and maybe even buying more things that you need or, or investing in stuff that ends up sitting in the shed more often than you thought yep. it would. I think if you listen to every, or read and listen to what everyone's got to say out there and bought everything everyone told you to buy, yeah, it kind of goes against the whole ethos of what Snowies is about, but yep. you probably don't need a lot of that stuff. You, yep. you actually need very minimal I mean, the idea of camping is is to get away from it all, right? So yeah. you can get by with not much stuff. Yeah. Probably the smartest way about approaching it is buying right with some things and mm. buying other things that uh, maybe you can evolve, you can sort of turn into something or upgrade at a later date mm. and that first thing doesn't necessarily become completely useless. Mm. So by buying right the first time, I'd say like a sleeping mat is a good thing to buy Right, the By first right. time yeah, because absolutely. a good night's sleep is going to make a big difference mm-hmm. to uh, to your camping trip. Yeah, how much you, you enjoy right, how much it, you enjoy and it, yeah. yeah, whether you want to keep doing it. Yep, and a, a tent's another one like, mm. with slight caveat there. I'd say buy a decent quality tent, but yes. don't buy the best tent straight up. If you yeah. if you're not sure if camping's your thing, you can buy tent like a, a dome style tent not mm-hmm. a, not all the fancy instant up things or anything like that but just a basic dome style tent that's gonna sort of house a family of four yeah with a little bit of space for a reasonably affordable amount of money if you then down the track decide we love this and we want more space you can upgrade that tent and that first tent doesn't become mm-hmm. useless that can now then become if it's family camping it become your kids tent mm-hmm. down the track so absolutely so you're not it doesn't become redundant Redun- at yeah. a certain point. It's a, it's, a, it's a useful item, but you'll still be using the same camp sleeping mat and sleeping bag and those sort of things that you mm. first bought if you looked after them. So, Another good point possibly is that if you are starting out camping or, or maybe you are looking to get a tent and you haven't had one before is to ask your family and friends if they've got one that you can borrow. That would probably be my recommendation first up. And then even if you know that you do want to try camping and you do want to buy a tent, try not to buy a tent that you can afford right now if that tent isn't actually going to last because Mm. 
at the end of the day, that whole buy once, buy right thing, if you buy once and it's not right or it's a cheaper quality tent or it's probably not going to last you very long or it's not going to stand up to conditions long term and things like that, you're actually going to end up spending more money yep. over the over the, the course of sort of buying cheaper, more rubbish options that might break and then you end up throwing it in the bin or not being able to use it and you get something else and whatever. So yep. it's better off in my opinion – to do your research, to find out from, you know, give us a call at Snowy's or wherever you get your camping gear from, get some information from experts about the different options, try and work out what's going to be best for you, Mm -hmm. then work out what it is that you need and then aim to sort of save if you're needing to save to get – to get that tent and then in the meantime borrow yeah borrow from people first up i think that would be a really good choice i think that's probably a really good way about it borrow a tent yeah. first up before you even decide you you know if you're just testing the water definitely yeah. just borrow something first yeah and yeah if you if you're buying if you've got a certain dollar value that you've got for a tent maybe you're best dropping a few of those fancy sales features yeah to spend that extra money in the quality of the tent yeah because it's i mean Probably you find those features are long forgotten well before that night that the tent just leaked everywhere and collapsed or whatever exactly because right. it was really poor quality. But yeah. it had all these extra features and stuff that we really liked. Exactly all, right. All that money goes into making those features and not into the actual quality or the build of the tent. So, yeah. Yeah, buy something I mean, that's going to stay up. The other good thing is also um, getting sort of building a camping family in that if you've got friends and or, or other family members or people you know who enjoy camping, try and organise some trips where you can all go together and then you mm-hmm. can all share the load because, you know, someone like one of our mates has a gazebo. We don't buy, we don't have a gazebo. Mm-hmm. We don't sort of use one very often. We've got a big shelter. But if we're only going to go away for one night or something, we don't tend to worry about putting the shelter up. But if we go away with friends, they just pop the gazebo up and then, you know, you can use that shelter yeah. as an extra piece of gear that you don't need. You can pull your resources with fire pit cooking equipment or, you know, whatever. So it's not, yeah, you share the load there with with different kinds of gear. That's not always you having to buy everything. Yeah, that's a good one. Stoves, you don't all need yep. a stove. You can share a stove. Um, yep. Chairs, you might find people you know have got enough chairs to go for all of you. Yeah, so absolutely. You, you more just, I guess, that personal stuff like your sleeping bag and that sort of thing that maybe mm. you just want to, have your own sleeping bag. Mm. Um, but, yeah, the other things you can certainly borrow and it's going yeah. to get you into that space and work out what you want to buy. So when you go to buy, yeah. you've got some experience under your belt and you say, I like this because or I don't like this. Or The thing with sleeping bags though too is that I have in the past wasted money on sleeping bags because I've just bought what I can afford and I've just looked at the label and I've assumed that the information on the sleeping mm. bag was enough for me to go buy without sort of doing more research and then ended up with a bunch of sleeping bags that are useless and they still literally sit in the top of the cupboard and don't we've use heard, very often. We've heard this story before, haven't so, we? In a cold night so overseas somewhere. Essentially <laughs> don't sort of write off – chucking your doona and your pillow from your bed in the car. If you know that that keeps you warm, mm. you've got a couple of extra blankets at home and you haven't quite invested in sleeping bags yet, there's no reason why you can't take your doona. I still use a doona. I don't actually have a sleeping bag. I yeah, have, we use I a doona too. my sheets that I don't use at home anymore. Yep. Now I just go over my self-inflating mat yep. and I've got a sheet and, I, and my swag's made up like my bed at home just yeah. with older sheets and dunas and yeah. stuff and it's, it's plenty warm enough. I think that's a really good option as well if you're a couple or you're bed sharing with someone. A doona I find tends to be a bit of a better option than a, a double sleeping bag because the double sleeping bags – even though they're called double, once you – they're like 1.4 metres wide or something. And once you put two bodies in there and then you add, the, you know, the tossing and turning. And, mm-hmm. I mean, I love my partner but I don't really want to be velcro <laughs> to him all night and, and stuck stuck in a bag. And so, yeah, yeah. dunas are a good option. Because they're usually about 1.4 wide, right? So by the time you both crawl in there and then the, and then they're sort of – You're a you 3D it object. Bit, yeah, yeah. It's pretty tight in there. Yeah, it is. But also a double sleeping bag has a layer on the top and the bottom. And if you've yeah. got a good mat, you don't need that layer on the bottom. So we're just taking your doona, you can also reduce the size of what you're packing. Yeah. And if it's the first time camping, you might only have a SUV. Well, I shouldn't say only an SUV. Yeah. You might have limited space, but mm-hmm. maybe even a sedan. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to chuck massive swags or tents in a sedan. Of course. You've got to kind of think about we're going to do this. I need to fit it in this amount of space. So yeah, yeah it, you might need to reduce 
the size of what you're taking as well. Yeah. And Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace are like just rife with secondhand camping gear and things like that Mm -hmm. because a lot of people who are probably like me and you like to just upgrade to stuff and even though they've still got perfectly good stuff there, you know, to pass it on or stuff they don't always want to keep hanging on or people who've tried camping and they're just like, it's just not really for me. Yep. Um, but there yeah. are lots of really good options out there for secondhand stuff too. I've probably got a bit of stuff I could sell because when I actually pack my car, the shelves still three quarters full yeah. at home of all the stuff that I don't take. Yeah. It's cool, but you don't necessarily need it. Yeah. yeah. And things like cutlery and, and plastic plates and things like that. I personally have my camping cutlery is just – a really cheap at home dining set that I got mm-hmm. from Kmart. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, I could have gone to a camping shop and bought a specific sort of camping cutlery set on a rock or whatever. And it just, it would have cost me twice as much. Yep. So there are sort of ways and though, you know, you, you're more cheaper homeware stores do have a lot of options that are good for camping in them from, I, I mean, I personally, there's probably lots of people out there who've bought, gear like sleeping bags and tents and things like that from those places I personally wouldn't buy things like that from those places but Mm. when it comes to like cutlery or malamine plates or or whatever you know you can get them a little bit more on a budget from places like that there are some options that snows I think 360 degrees is a really good brand for that oh yeah they've got that that big melamine family set that's a good option so that's a really good brand to look for if you're on the snowy site check the 360 degrees brand because that's Reasonable quality entry level stuff. It's, yeah. it's Cedar Summit that produce it. So yeah, that's the good other stuff. thing also probably worth mentioning as well is um, stainless steel dinnerware. You can get you can buy individually, so you don't have to buy a full set mm. of say six m- plates and six mugs if there's only going to be two of you, and they will last forever. You know, you drop a yep. stainless steel plate, you chuck it in. You can do whatever. It's not going to break. It's not going to smash. It's not going to yep. chip compared to sort of enamel and things like that. So yeah. even though, you know, a stainless steel plate on its own might be 3 or $4 or something like that, but if you are wanting to invest in a really good quality thing that you know will last you forever and you yeah. want to buy once, buy right, they're great options too. You can cook on them even, put them over yeah, the gas. And absolutely. The bowls, I've always boiled water in those. Yep. It's, yeah, they're a great option. They get dented up but they just keep working. Yeah, for sure. Probably should move on to supplies. The supplies you take camping because uh, mm-hmm. you've got all the gear, right, but then mm-hmm. you go and load up the car mm-hmm. and – all the food and everything you've got to take ends up costing a bucket load as well. So preparation is a big thing there. If you want to, if you want to pack at the last minute, then you're probably going to spend a bit more, but if you're willing to, and I think you're probably best position to comment on this, but if you're willing to plan ahead at least a few weeks and maybe the meals that you cook, you cook double lots and freeze or vacuum seal or whatever, Mm -hmm. You can get by with some good food definitely at a much lower cost than just going to the supermarket and saying we need this, 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 and this, yeah. and also having a kit with the basics in it, salt, herbs, that sort of thing, rather than buying it all. Yeah, we we've got um like a, a I think you use tubs as well, and we've mm. got a tub that's our kitchen thing, and we've got things like you know, our paper towel, salt and pepper, mm. oil, just things like that that is just always in there, so we know we don't have to worry about it, we don't have to buy it every time. Mm-hmm. I do, we've touched on it before in an episode when we've talked about, you know, keeping your food fresh and and things like that. I think it was a couple of episodes ago. If you haven't um, checked in on that one, I'd recommend you to do it because that's really good, helpful aside to camping on a budget. But if you do have a dehydrator and you do have a a vac sealer, which I know are not necessarily things that people who are on a budget might have, but we're fortunate enough to have one. They can really help with preparing food in advance. And as you say, if you're making extra, you can chuck it in Mm. the freezer or or what have you. But another thing that I've started doing recently, especially because my kids are getting older and my eldest is just eating like a train at the moment, (laughs) is um, when you go to the supermarket, if there's a sale on cans of soup concentrate for a dollar per can or something, Mm. just grab a couple of that. A couple of things of that or, you know, just stuff that you know will store for a long time that you Mm -hmm. know is going to be really handy to have with you. Um, And then when it does come to camping, you've sort of got this little cache of stuff that you've already got ready to go. And, I mean, it is packaging and it does sort of add to making sure you need to clean up after yourself and and don't leave things behind. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, at the end of the day, 
a really good option and, and quite nutritious if you're getting a, a, a can of soup mm-hmm. tends to be a lot more nutritious than if you were going to have little bits and pieces of snack and yeah. it can be more filling and things like yeah. that as well. And the most packing is you just go to the pantry, open up the pantry and you've already yep. got a heap of your supplies there and then you're just adding a little yeah. bit to that to kind of finish it off. So yep. yeah, that's definitely. A good choice. Um, what about um, like fuel is if you're traveling a long mm-hmm. way and remote, fuel is a big cost, right? A you, huge cost. To, budget a lot for fuel. So Especially when you are in those remote places, fuel mm, prices are going to be a lot higher. I mean, too, I don't know what they are at the moment, but mm. prob- like diesel is probably well in excess of $2 a, a litre in a lot of places. Yeah. Um, so you, you're going to be spending more for fuel. If you're travelling yeah. remote, you're going to be spending more for fuel. So fill up before you go. If you can mm. and it's safe to do so, you can carry it on the outside of the car, take mm. some jerry cans mm. of fuel, not – it's easier said than done because you, yeah. you can't – you've got to be careful about how you carry fuel and also weight if it's on a roof rack. Yeah. I feel like we mentioned roof rack weight in every episode that we, we have. Do. <laughs> <laughs> we um, do. But try and pay for it back before you go. Fill up the car before yeah. you leave the city, before you leave town because that's going to yep. save you money. But yeah. you will need to budget. If you're driving a lot, you will need to budget a bit more for fuel. There's yeah. not really any secret source to yeah. paying this for fuel when mm. you're in the outback. you, mm. you just got to pay for it when it's there. Yeah. Um. And on fuel, uh, we've talked about gas stoves, so mm. LPG is is pretty cheap. But mm. this campfire cooking is it's free. It's free apart from the cost of the wood if you're going to buy it, I yeah. suppose. So if you can get by with cooking on a campfire, then mm-hmm. you don't have to buy the stove, I suppose. Yep. Um, you probably need some ut- um, utilities like camp oven and fry pan and stuff yeah. that you can use on the campfire. Um, and wood. You can pick up wood at a pretty good price at maybe some stations. And that's yeah. something that have their own timber that they're trying to sell. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't recommend getting it always from a, a server. I've had a few bad experiences with wet timber from a server. Yeah. You pay a lot for it and it just doesn't burn, so you waste your money doing that. And so, I don't really – I'm not a fan of those Enviro logs, you know, no, the ones not, that I've are like compressed or dust yeah. or whatever. I don't think they, they do a great job they burn personally. Really quickly, yeah. I find, and they're yeah. – And well, I guess they might work maybe if you've got like a combustion heater at home or something that will officially – put heat out, but if you're campfire cooking and you're needing coals to do your cooking, they're not a great choice. It's not hot enough? Is that, is that your experience? Well, they just them? don't really turn into a coal. Yeah, they do you just know what crum- I mean? They, they just crumble. sort of crumble yeah. And, and, yeah, not not functional coals for cooking. Yeah. Um, charcoal can be a better way about yeah. that. I think if you buy charcoal, yep. I'll get some bulk charcoal. It's a little bit lighter than some timber to carry, yep. but that ends up I'm pretty – I think it burns with less smoke and burns a bit hotter as well. I think I'm not sure the size yeah. behind that. But. Well, we've got like a, a portable spit roaster that sometimes we'll take with us. So then we'll take charcoal as well because okay. it literally just functions straight off charcoal. Yeah. So yeah. charcoal, look in a hardware shop before you go. Yeah, definitely. Um, and maybe just do a bit of research on where you might be able to pick up some timber. Yeah. Um, but also have a think about how you're going to cart it yeah. because you could end up spending a lot of money on timber mm. that doesn't burn very well if you're just mm-hmm. going to call into the servo on the way out mm. because yeah, I don't know about your experience, but my experience with those kind of plantation things are in a you know, yeah. hessian bag from a supermarket or a servo, mm-hmm. the timber's not actually not that, that great. Cooking, yeah. So, yeah. I think um, you were talking before about you've recently purchased a liquid fuel stove mm. because you're already in a lot of cases taking fuel or it's it's better to if you're using a liquid, sto- l- liquid, liquid fuel, fuel stove, stove yeah. it's better for you to plan for exactly how much fuel you need to take so you're not necessarily carting a huge big gas bottle, not knowing yep. how much is in it or buying bringing more fuel than required and things like that. Yeah, there's there probably be plenty of people who argue this, but I okay. I wanted to get away from taking an LPG gas container, and I'm current, I haven't actually used my liquid fuel stove yeah. yet, but I have from a hiking perspective. So I've applied what I use for my hiking days, which yep. are, I like to think I'm not over my hiking days, but yeah. it's more family camping at the moment. <laughs> yeah, um, where I moved from a, a lightweight gas stove where you take 230. Um, gram gas canisters right and it gets to a point where they sort of shake it and you think oh i don't know how much gas is in there i'll take a new one yeah and then i end up taking 50 percent or 100 you know twice as much gas than i actually need because mm. i didn't want to run out yeah it's a bit harder to gauge that's right yeah so i carried that extra weight in gas i didn't need to so i moved to a liquid fuel stove now the stove was heavier but i could kind of do a few tests beforehand and then work out roughly if i'm cooking this food during the day i know i need so many meals of liquid fuel yeah, right and i could just take specifically that plus a little bit of a buffer mm. for the trip. So I'm only taking the fuel that I actually need. Okay. So I want to apply that to camping now mm. where I'm, I'm not having to transport a gas bottle on the roof. Yep. Um, Cause there's a cost there with a gas bottle, right? And the yep. stove, mm-hmm. I've just got the stove now and I can just take 
shellite or mm-hmm. even unleaded fuel mm-hmm. um, and just use what I need on the trip. So yeah. I feel like that's probably saving me money in, in the long run. The stove yeah. costs more to start with yeah. but I'm not wasting as much But, again, gas, that, so. I guess that goes back to the buy once buy right sort of option is yeah. if you do your research and you sort of start to think about things, these things in advance, mm-hmm. you, you've just bought that stove and that's the stove you've got. I mean, the existing stove that I have, I reckon it was given to me probably 15 years ago now and it still works and it's still perfectly functional. And I don't use it as much anymore because I predominantly do campfire cooking when campfires are allowed. So pretty mm-hmm. much all of winter, I don't use it, but whenever I do need to use it, it still works. Still perfectly functional. It's 15-year-old yeah. stove. I'm the same. I've got an old gas one. I'm pretty sure it's probably a oh, it's 20 odd years old, I reckon. And mm. it's probably from a, a department store or something. But yeah. it's just two burners. Not really anything can go wrong with it. And yeah. I always thought I'll get a new one when this rusts out. Yeah. It's, it's going to be another a- 20 years, I think, before it rusts out. Yeah. But I wanted to move away from LPG because I'm at the point of having to retest or upgrade my gas bottle. Yeah. I thought, well, maybe now's, now's the time to make a change. But this stove I've bought now is probably going to last generations as well. So the stove, yeah, is probably a good buy one, buy once, buy mm. right kind of scenario. And you made just quickly there the comment about, you know, when that one rusted out or, or deteriorated or whatever, you'd buy a new one. If you look after your gear properly and you maintain it properly, that was going to reduce your need to replace gear as well. Absolutely. So making yep. sure, you know, if you're storing it in the shed that it's in waterproof tubs or containers or that your shed's sealed or, you know, just the way that you store your stuff is yep. and the way you care for it long term long term is going to make yeah. sure that it lasts a really long time as well. Definitely. The, Let- uh, the, well, the most expensive thing I often find with going camping is accommodation. Mm-hmm. So generally holiday parks, caravan parks, those sorts of things, you do pay a lot more, Mm -hmm. but you do get a lot more than like, for example, it's got a camp kitchen. You don't have to worry about taking all of your stuff and Mm -hmm. it can be a good option for people who don't have a lot of gear to Mm -hmm. do that caravan park camping to begin with. Um, But in terms of what you're actually paying for, when you go camping, it's quite expensive compared to free camping or, or cheaper camping sites that don't have amenities. Yeah, well, uh, uh, if we have free camping, if yep. you're somewhere like Wiki Camps, like an app like Wiki, Wiki Camps, mm-hmm. you can find a lot of free sites around. Yeah. But in general, if you're paying for a site, say through parks or something, it's sort of less start at like $13 a night yeah. thereabouts yep. for a, a site that's probably got a toilet somewhere within a kilometre radius of yep. the campsite. So that's quite affordable. Mm. Um, but a, a caravan park in comparison is probably- I You're like know, 25, 30 a night just as a for, base for and then or, add or to camp. that when you that's have right. kids and things like that as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, because they charge for an extra yeah. extra person, whereas a lot of campsites is just $13 for, yeah. for their site, usually for up to four people or something. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think you're right that- it can impact enjoyability. If you want to go and not spend anything to say, stay somewhere, then you don't have those facilities. You've yeah. got to take all your stoves and everything with you and you've got to settle that up. And there's a bit more work around setting the camp up and mm-hmm. making it a nice place. I enjoy that. Mm, me for, too. For, for people who are first starting out, mm. maybe not the best yeah. thing because you, you're you going to maybe have a negative experience because yeah. you, you've you got to kind of roll the punches a bit. Sometimes yeah. you've forgotten something or that's not worked or there's yeah. – the, Tents full of dirt because <laughs> the kids have just jumped in the puddle. That's and then right. It can and- be there. Can, it can be a lot more overwhelming and a, yeah. a lot more stressful to camp that way if yep. it's not something that you're more practiced at yep. or used to. Yeah, um, it's a lot of what ifs, but and you know, sh- and also not just cooking, but showers and things like that as well. Like if you're happy to have a shower once in a week or something, because you know, I mean, yes, you can set up a shower um, site when you're going camping and you're out bush and, and all that sort of stuff, but then you have to carry more water and, and bits yep. and pieces. So often if you're just going away for a weekend to a place that has no amenities, you're not going to shower no, unless you then want to invest in showering equipment and stuff, which adds, adds an extra expense. So yeah. And extra space in your car and everything. Yeah. So, so you can, you can, stay places for yep. next to nothing yep. but just have a think about what value you put on that and if of you course. do stay in free campsites you just want to chuck this in there definitely i think you you mentioned this one oh, just yeah just went away on the uh, weekend to like a, a cheaper place that we love yeah. and it's pretty remote and whatever but literally rubbish everywhere yeah. like i'm not joking just 
everywhere. And it's very frustrating because in my experience, the places where you do have to pay a little bit more money to go to are cleaner. Mm -hmm. The places that are free or budget or cheaper sites tend to be trashed more often than not. And that's not everybody who's responsible for that. But I just feel it frustrates me because part of me feels like if Mm. it's free or you don't have to invest in it, then it's taken for granted a bit more. And there are quite a few sites um, that have come up in the last couple of weeks where people have said, even in camping groups that I'm in on Facebook and things like that, owners of those camps have put up a post saying, look, just to let the community know, it's quite likely that we will shut down in the next couple of months due to rubbish and disrespect to the campsite Mm. or, you know, fences blocking off access to areas being pulled up and people just driving in there because it's like free and they can do whatever they want. And actually it's not. So just bear in mind that if you are going to be accessing free sites or budget camping sites, you need to pick up your rubbish. You need to take care of all of your stuff because if you don't, those places are going to shut and they're not going to be available for anybody anymore. Just leave footprints and tire tracks because it's often property owners or council that have just said you can use this space. It's a bit like you give your kids space in their house and say you can have this, I suppose. But if you leave it a mess, we're just going to turn it into something else if you can't look after it. Exactly right. Apparently as adults, there's a heap of us who are not capable of doing that with these free sites. So just clean it up because it's really good for all of us to have that space to, um, you know, to enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. We should probably wrap up. We should. We've been talking for a fair while now. I just say, buy once, buy right with certain gear. Yep. Um, there's a lot to sort of consider with that, but give us a call. Yeah. We can talk you through what to don't, buy don't right. Don't always just buy the cheapest option. It, it, it's definitely worth it to try and hold off a bit yep. longer to get the right thing for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Treat free campsites with respect. I just want to chuck that one in there again. <laughs> again, because sick yes. Because sick camp dirt are in mess and yeah. muck around the campsite. And I, I want to still be able to go to the places that I love going. Absolutely. So please, yeah. Uh, preparation in advance is going to save you money. Yes, absolutely. Um, most important thing is just make sure you've got lots of fun and yeah. happy memories because maybe a little bit of extra money spent somewhere is going to make for a better holiday and that's what you're doing it for in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly right. So cool. jump on to our Facebook group, Snowy's Camping Show, and give us your budget-friendly camping tips. Please also don't forget to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. And you can check out snowies.com.au for all your camping needs. And don't forget to give us a call if you need any advice with what to pick. I've said. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Catch you later. Bye.